what are we watching here, mm. Pierre? I believe that could be Roger Federer. There he is. Mm. He's getting a talking to. Well, the, here, that's the doctor explaining what the physio is actually doing. Because Federer isn't used to this sort of thing on the change of ends, so he's just being reassured that nothing untoward is happening. Well, he didn't actually ask for a massage. That's the weird thing. Well, no, that's, I think somebody's just jumped out from the crowd and, and, uh, with an urge to massage Roger Federer's left thigh. There's nothing much you can do about that. Well, no. And someone has it in their mind that they're going to massage you, they're going to massage and you. And is a good sport. He'll play along. Another well, expression on Pete Sampras' face. What, what is he puzzled about? Well, he's arguing with the umpire now about something. I think he's, he's making a comment about his tie, of all things. It seems very strange that that's got under his skin. He looks bemused by the tie. And look, Federer himself says, I don't know anything about the tie. And the umpire's now trying to justice. Says, I only have one like this. What's the problem? One? one. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. That's one too many. Oh, now, but oh, I think this was the third juice of the game. Yeah. I read an interview with Dimitrov. It was just, I didn't think much of the comment at the time, but in it he said he loves the tennis scoring system and he particularly loves when the game gets to juice. He says, I see it almost like a, a safety point where I feel comfortable and secure and sometimes I never want to move from that point. And I, I'm just wondering, is he somehow bringing it back out of a sense of wanting this comfort. He's inexorably drawn to juice. Uh, well, and, as I uh, said... As we see now... He's back there again. Of course. So that serve was designed to get back to juice. I mean, he's, he's smiling. Yeah. He feels great. Borg's serve at the moment is he's on fire. Ooh, oh, that another was, that, chance. That was straight at Borg. It was straight at Borg. So Who knows what would have happened if it would have hit Borg. I wouldn't be surprised if that hit Borg, Borg would have gone up in a puff of smoke. Just, like the magician just disintegrated is. in front of our eyes. <laughs> it's just, it's come back. Uncle Tony's up yelling. He's yelling. He's yelling at the ice cream vendor. Right, I think he's after a choc top. Yeah. Does. Okay. And, and if not that, a cornetto. And look at the doll. He, he doesn't appreciate Uncle Tony yelling out for ice cream with exactly. his wife. Choc top, what are you talking about? Buzz, I love the young upstart taking it right to the, uh, the established champion. And look at this now. He's flaunting he's flaunting his nipples right in the face of Pete Sampras again. That was a peck flex there, mm. I think. Yeah, just to say, look, Pete, look at, you, look at, look at this. Well, I mean, Pete I mean, is pretending not to notice and he's wrapped a towel around himself in some kind of defence. Oh, beautiful backhand down the line. He glances up at his box and shakes his fist. I don't know if that was a message there to Merka. I'll leave you. I'll leave you. Don't think that I, I'm not capable of it. I know Fedra's as meek as a mouse off the court, but he likes to get belligerent towards Merka while he's playing a match. Oh, it's safe. I wonder if we've got Teddy Shingles. Teddy, can you, are you still down there? Talk to sir. As far as I'm down here and the electricity is unbelievable. People are sitting here waiting. There's barely a sound, a ripple of sound. And I've lost my voice already, Buzz. Excuse me. Excuse me, Buzz. I hope they didn't hear that down on the court side. It's, again, one of those things I believe his coach is working with him on. Yeah. To get him past that juice point. Well, he said in that same interview, he said, if I could one day get to 12 juices, then my career would be complete. For him, that would be the equivalent of surpassing the Federer Grand Slam total. Yeah, 12 juices. I'm not sure if there's much call for that kind of record in the game, but who knows? Perhaps if Dimitrov starts it, it could be something that other players will aspire to. He could take a leaf out of Pete Sampras' book, who, behind his home, he has a cliff face. He's actually etched in a la Mount Rushmore, mm. Rod Laver, Bjorn Borg, Lou sorry, Hode, and, it, sorry, and himself. Is this Pete Sampras or Roger Federer who's done this? Pete Sampras. Pete Sampras has. I think it'd be very, very presumptuous of Roger Federer who has won nothing. Mm. Look, at that, look at that backhand from, from Dimitrov. That had the juice written all over oh. it. Nadal now with another break point. Well, he's got to be careful here, Dimitrov. He does want to give up a game in his pursuit of the juice record. Teddy, can you hear me? It's unbelievable down here, Pierre. It's simply unbelievable. Excuse me, Pierre. Excuse me. Teddy, are you, are you all right? Yes, unbelievable. I've lost my voice. This is half the crowd here. A woman behind me whinnied like a horse after that last point. It was incredible to hear. And she wasn't embarrassed. Not at all. She was proud. 
unless I'm mistaken, I'm sure. Tonight, Fredra looks at least two inches taller than I've seen him in the past. So you're going, you think there are lifts in his shoes? I'm, I'm almost certain of it. Really. Uh, how else can you explain uh, this change in that backhand? Uh, the coin toss before the match. Mm. And the Dalek got a little startled. He sort of looked up suddenly at Fedra mm. and thought, what's going on? Mm. Well, I think Fedra was even, even making some comments about how thin on top Rafa's getting which he normally wouldn't be at, but they're normally the same height. It wasn't done out of any maliciousness. No, no, it's just it, was just an ob- it, it was just an observation. That's right. Can he get to a sixth juice? This would be a, a, a milestone in the young man's well, career. Well, this is pressure, Buzz. This, yeah. is, this is pressure. Was it what they trained for, Pierre? And sometimes when the ball hits the chalk and there's that puff of oh, smoke, yeah. he often says that he'll see the faces of his grandparents forming in that puff of smoke, and that can sometimes distract him. But he'll nod, say hello. He'll nod, start up a conversation and apologise profusely. But about what we don't well, know. We don't know, we don't really want to know. That's, that's a private matter for the Borgs. It would have been very easy for him to spray that forehand just a little wide in going for it. And look at that, Nadal's girlfriend's left. Nadal's partner has left the building. She was only there for the juice record and she is devastated. She's lost interest in the match. That's all she was there for. She said, I'm coming to, you to Australia with you, Rafa. If you can show me that you can get 12 juices, it means you're serious about our relationship. Wow. And, you know, relationships have split up for less. I'm telling you that. Well, I think Uncle Tony's gone to get her back because if Rafa happens to look up at the box and sees her gone, I fear for the rest of uh, this match. Uh, from Surely he must suspect that she would, she would be going. Well, if he, you know. I think uh, Moya has actually donned a wig... In the meantime, to try and somehow fool, fool Rafa. It works, because well, if you look at the facial structure, it's not that dissimilar.